AC7 Bangor. This is ABC7 News at Noon. A former candidate for governor is expected to plead guilty to possessing videos and images of child sexual abuse. Good afternoon, I'm Susan Farley. MSAD 41 could be getting the district's first ever school resource officer. And it's tick season again. There are things you should know about the diseases they can cause. Thank you for joining us. We'll have more on these and other stories in just a moment. First, let's check in with meteorologist Devin Biggs. Devin? Hey Susan, happy Wednesday afternoon. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Lou Jean Fredericks across the Eastern Maine Medical Center, serving the greater Bangor area for over 65 years. Here we go, a small crowd advisory is posted until 6 a.m. now on Thursday. It looks like this has been extended though, because wave heights are expected to remain high. On top of that though, some river flooding is taking place as well. These are in effect until further notice. When you see a dummy time like that though, that basically means it's in effect until further notice because of the river level being high. Well, otherwise, though, we're moving forward. We've had a few rain showers this morning. Starting to back off. Maybe a few snowflakes in the northern parts of the state this morning as well. We'll be watching for more rain showers on and on throughout the daytime period with this big area low pressure right here. It's going to be tracking off towards the north and east over time, so we'll keep that going with chances for rain and snow showers possible late tonight with those opportunities with the rain chances further down to the south and the snow chance further off towards the north as well. Once you get that out of here, though, I think we'll be done with any opportunities for at least the snow part. But otherwise, the winds will be gusty at around 10 to 15 miles per hour at times today. We'll keep that going again for the daytime tomorrow. Some higher gusts up to 25 miles per hour cannot be ruled out. So for today, though, upper 40s, maybe some lower 50s. Cloudy with rain showers on the way. East wind about 20 to maybe 25 miles per hour. By tonight, here we are. Upper 30s, a few rain and snow showers possible. The northeast wind backing off briefly to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Your early forecast for the rest of the afternoon period. A mostly cloudy sky. Chances for rain showers possible. Temperatures in the upper 40s. Your full five-day forecast is coming up, Susan. Thank you, Devin. A wealthy attorney who came close to being elected governor in Maine in 2010 is expected to plead guilty to possessing videos and images of child sexual abuse. 76-year-old Elliot Cutler is due in an Ellsworth courtroom tomorrow. According to a court document, he's expected to serve nine months in prison as part of a plea agreement. Cutler is expected to plead guilty to four counts of possession of sexually explicit material of a child under 12. According to the terms of the agreement hammered out with prosecutors, the judge would still need to approve the deal. The sentencing moratorium describes Cutler's addiction to pornography, with Cutler acknowledging that he downloaded hundreds of images and videos. His attorneys noted that Cutler never engaged in inappropriate conduct with children. Cutler ran for governor twice as an independent, losing in 2010 by less than two percentage points to Republican Paul LePage. A man is facing multiple charges after a 20-hour standoff in Auburn. Around 3 yesterday, police responded to a report that someone shot at a person's car. The caller said he and the suspect, 47-year-old Darren Saunders, got into an online fight that escalated into threats. Police say he drove by the suspect's home after the suspect gave him the address looking for a fight. Auburn police say Saunders refused to come out of his home and fired rounds at police. The standoff ended peacefully around 10:15 Tuesday morning, nearly 21 hours later. Saunders is facing multiple charges, including elevated aggravated assault. MSAD 41's superintendent has suggested that the district hire their first ever school resource officer, but there are still questions that need to be answered. AJ Douglas talked to Milo's police chief to learn how the proposal could become a reality. You never know when something or where something is going to happen, and I think that point has been driven home across the country. Milo Police Chief Nicholas Klukey says he is open to discussing if and how a school resource officer could serve the town of Milo's schools. It's, it's going to be a basically a safety and security position. A lot more discussion needs to happen. The Milo Police Chief says the decision could ultimately come down to funding. That's a challenge being on two different um, uh, budget cycles. They go in the summer to summer. We go from January 1st to December 31st. MSAD 41 Superintendent Michael Wright says it's time for an officer to assist in the schools. Wright says the district is open to funding the position while school is in session. However, he's requested that the town take over those employment costs when the schools are closed during the summer and other breaks. School is in session 
12 months out of the year, you know, so this you have to employ the person full time for those 12 months. Kluke says the position could cost an estimated $90,000 annually. We talked to some community members who endorsed the idea, saying teachers deserve the support of a school resource officer. The town select board plans to discuss if the proposed position can be partially funded with municipal funds during Tuesday night's meeting. In Milo, A.J. Douglas for ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. The Federal Emergency Management Agency will send nearly $16 million to a Bangor hospital for its efforts during the pandemic. A statement from FEMA says the money will reimburse Northern Light Eastern Maine Medical Center for the cost of hiring temporary staff to deal with increased patient loads between September 2021 and May 2022. So far, FEMA has provided more than $270 million in public assistance grants to Maine to reimburse the state for pandemic-related expenses. An invasive fish species is wreaking havoc in the Belgrade Lakes region, and the problem is still growing. Maine wildlife officials say in the early 1980s, the northern pike was illegally introduced to the area. The northern pike is an apex predator, an aggressive fish known to outcompete other fish and take over bodies of water. They also prey on native fish, including salmon. Experts say once these invasive fish are established in bodies of water, they're almost impossible to remove. These pike have just expanded and exploded in that watershed. Um, now we find them in over 40 lakes and ponds in Maine, mm -hmm. uh, whereas it used to be in just one. It really is an issue when it comes to, you know, protecting some of our, our native fish like brook trout and landlocked salmon and some of our fisheries for smallmouth and largemouth bass. He says if you're caught with live fish trying to stock a pond, you can be fined up to $10,000. Lottie says he hopes this steep fine makes people think twice about putting fish where they don't belong. After an uptick in Lyme disease cases last year, experts are spreading awareness about preventing tick-borne diseases. Our David Ledford has the story. Tick season has begun. While the exact numbers are hard to predict, experts say that Maine's milder winter could likely mean a rise in the state's tick population. With the, the warmer temperatures, they uh, have an easier time surviving that winter, so they can uh, emerge in, in higher numbers. So we can see the, those, uh, those warming trends during the winter months contributing to, to expanding tick numbers and expanding tick dis distribution. According to the Maine CDC, there were more than 2,600 cases of Lyme disease in 2020 an illness spread by deer ticks. Additionally, the CDC recently reported that babesiosis, another disease carried by ticks, is now considered endemic in Maine, meaning it is regularly found in the region. Experts say it's best to wear clothing that fully covers your skin and to make the area around your home less hospitable to ticks by mowing the lawn and using pesticide sprays. However, protection goes even further than that. <laughs> Experts say it's important to check your pets and yourself for ticks after spending any amount of time outdoors, not just after a hike or a walk in the park, because ticks can be found in places you might not expect. What we found with the, uh, the tick submissions to our lab is that the majority of people that are encountering these ticks and sending them in uh, are picking them up kind of in and around the home landscapes, like, you know, just going down to, to check the, uh, the mail at the end of the driveway or taking the dog out for a quick walk. For dogs, experts recommend tick collars and the Lyme vaccine. Dr. Kate Domenico, president of the Maine Veterinary Medical Association, says it's important to look out for warning signs in your pets. So the signs that we see is that your pet could be simply just not eating. Uh, they could have a fever, lameness. They could just not be able to get up, so their you know, legs act like they're not working. In humans, experts say Lyme disease can produce flu-like symptoms and sometimes a bullseye-shaped rash near the tick bite. Tick season typically runs from spring to fall. If you suspect you have a tick-borne illness, visit your health care provider as soon as possible. In Orono, David Ledford, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Up on ABC 7 News at noon, tourism is a big industry in the state. Business owners are predicting another worker shortage this summer. We'll have details when we return. I've been in a few accidents and had surgery on my right foot first and contracted a blood disorder. I had quite a few seizures after that and then had a massive stroke. That was a really rough time in my life. Donna has helped me through so much. She knew exactly what I was going through 
and she made sure that I had nurses in my home. She helps me with all of my medications. She coordinates all my rides to any facility I need to go to. She talks to my doctors personally. Thanks to Donna, I'm sitting in my own home and I'm getting the care I need and I'm getting all the therapy I need. It's made my life tremendously easier. Hi, buddy, how you doing? I'm doing all right, how are you, Donna? I am okay, how's your morning been? You're not overdoing, are you? No, I'm not overdoing it. Okay, remember you are in recovery, you come first. She gives me hope, she gives me faith. She puts a smile on my face every time I talk to her. I call her my second sister, and I've never even met her. Hello. Hey, buddy, how are you? Oh my goodness. Well, it is good to meet you. I have to thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything that you've done for me. That's what I'm here for. I love being able to make your life easier when I can and get you the care you need. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'll never forget you. Never forget you either, buddy. If I didn't have Donna in my life, I don't think that I'd be sitting where I'm sitting right now. Living in Maine means long, cold winters and hot, humid summers. Whatever the weather, Bangor Heat Pumps is your solution. Open 24-7, Bangor Heat Pumps takes care of you at home or at work. We operate statewide and service all brands and models. Understanding moving can be stressful. We will help move any units you may have. We offer a veterans discount in our home with a capeless hero discount. Visit us online at bangorheatpumpsllc.com or call or text us at 307-7746. Bangor Heat Pumps. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. A report from the Maine Tourism Association showed many businesses are unprepared for the large volume of people expected to visit the state in the next few months. Our Matthew Jaroncic has the story. There are many reasons why Maine is known as vacation land. The nice weather, picture-perfect views, and, of course, the seafood. Because of its reputation, the state has seen steady growth in its tourism industry. Every year, the Maine Tourism Association conducts a statewide study of how businesses are equipped for the upcoming tourist season. The study found just 29% of business owners reported they had sufficient staffing levels going into the summer season. You know, there's still a staffing shortage out there. A lot of businesses are, are going into uh, the season um, that are going to be understaffed um, from where they really need to be. Even well-known landmarks like Union River Lobster Pot report they're struggling to hire enough staff despite their best efforts. I used to be able to start in April and be able to finish up by um, mid-May by the time we would open up in June. But now we start in January, in, in the late January, early February in recruiting. So it's uh, gotten to be almost a full-time job. Other local business owners spoke about the preparation that goes into preparing for the summer season. Usually by the end of the previous summer, we start planning for the next summer. So we decide what we want to carry, you know, staffing and all of that. So it's usually an eight to ten month lead process for us. For us, it's just about, you know, sort of building up our supply here in the store, knowing what people are looking for uh, and just being ready for, for the, the influx of people. Maine Tourism Association Executive Director Tony Cameron says companies struggling with staffing should utilize the programs the organization offers to help recruit and retain employees. We're all in this together being proactive about it instead of being reactive, um, trying to go out and use the resources that uh, the, the tourism job boards that are out there um, and, uh, and, and communicate with each other. We're going to help try to uh, mitigate this problem better than other states. In Ellsworth, Matthew Jaroncic reporting for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Hassan University invited the public to its Bangor campus to take part in the end of semester art walk. Students selected their best artwork, which was put on display across seven venues on campus, from traditional forms of artwork like drawings, paintings, and photography, to graphic design and animation, and even projects in virtual and extended reality. The exhibitions covered a wide array of mediums. Associate Professor of Studio Arts Kathy Smith says students had to overcome some obstacles as they experimented with new techniques. 
And we find that it can be really challenging and really rewarding to work in different mediums and art forms that are, are new um, and that it does actually support um, you know, their careers and their fields and their livelihoods later on. A chance to attend the Art Walk, you can visit this story on our website to view more of their work. An Oakland couple is taking their love for cooking on the road with their very own food truck. Our Jody Hersey has more. Across from the North Street Playground in Waterville, Derek DeFelice works the grill inside the Heroes on Wheels food truck. I served in the Army from 03 to 09, did two deployments, Iraq, Afghanistan and uh, been out since 2009 and finally found our, uh, our passion. The couple closed their Heroes House of Pizza business in Skowhegan in 2022, instead opting to work side by side with one another on the road. The De Felices say they have no regrets opening their own food truck. They say the Heroes on Wheels business allows them to be their own boss. A lot of people have a hard time getting along with their husbands, especially being around them so much. Um, but we get in the truck and we only communicate about the orders that we need. The couple loves making burgers, hot dogs, Caesar salads with homemade dressing and doughboys. Our most popular items are probably our steak bomb. Um, it, everything's made to order. We get fresh bread trucked in for mass every week. Um, it's an amazing seller. I got a steak and cheese, a couple hot dogs, a cheeseburger and a chicken basket. <laughs> When the duo isn't catering at weddings, campgrounds, festivals, or other events, they park their business on the corner of Johnson Heights and North Street in Waterville. It just so happens to be where Derek's mother lives. I absolutely think it's fantastic. People love it. I've watched it. Crowds come by here. Even the daycare parents are enjoying it. <laughs> to learn more about Heroes on Wheels, check out the Heroes on Wheels Facebook page. In Waterville, I'm Jody Hersey for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. After the break, we'll take a look at hearing loss. It's more common and more serious than most of us realize. We'll be right back. Did you know that an alpaca item is the most wish-listed gift idea? Stop searching for that perfect gift and start shopping for it at the Blue Alpaca in Belfast. It doesn't matter who's on your gift list, the Blue Alpaca has something for everyone with an incredible selection of alpaca socks, hats, sweaters, even stuffed animals and more. Shop in-store or online and take advantage of their free nationwide shipping. Too much to choose from? Don't worry, the Blue Alpaca also offers gift cards. The Blue Alpaca. Feel the difference. Salida's Rug Cleaners in Bangor is the best and only spot you should go to for your rug cleanings. Serving Maine for more than 70 years, we care about your rugs. Clean rugs last longer, and our family takes pride in being the professionals that you can trust. Our cleaning process consists of soaking your rug in a bath, shampooing, rinsing, and drying in a humidity-controlled dry room, making sure no detail is overlooked. Need a repair? We fully service every type of rug for you. Salida's Rug Cleaners. We care about your rugs. Hi, this is Jason. And this is Jessica from Tossie's Checkout. A family-owned business located in Glenburn. Inviting you to come experience that welcoming hometown feeling when you're visiting our neck of the woods. You can always expect tasty treats. Pizza. Spirits. Familiar faces. And quality gasoline. With summer approaching and Pushaw Lake nearby. We look forward to seeing your smiling faces. Come, come check, check us out. out. In Maine, it's always truck season. And at Thornton Brothers in Lincoln, we are celebrating New Ram Truck Month by carrying the complete line of hard-charging new Ram trucks from light to heavy duty. At Thornton Brothers, you'll find the right truck for cargo space and comfort for those long trips on the road. No matter what Maine throws at you, our trucks have you covered. So come on over and test drive any of our award-winning new Ram trucks at Thornton Brothers, 125 Main Street, Lincoln. Hey, Maine. How are you? Yes, you. How are you really? It's a question we rarely ask ourselves. But to Northern Light Health, how you are means a lot. So we're out here asking and encouraging you to ask the people in your life, starting with yourself. So ask away. Then connect with us at northernlighthealth.org slash how are you.
1,500 U.S. troops are preparing to deploy to the southern border. Next week, Title 42, a pandemic-era policy restricting immigration, comes to an end. And President Biden is sending those additional troops ahead of an expected surge in border crossings. ABC's Lindsay Watts is in Washington tracking the potential impact. The Biden administration shoring up the U.S. border with Mexico. 1,500 active duty troops will join 2,500 National Guard members already there to assist Border Patrol. The White House says the new troops will be there for 90 days. These personnel will be performing administrative tasks like data entry and warehouse support. They will not be performing law enforcement functions or interacting with immigrants or migrants. Biden is sending the troops days before the Trump era Title 42 comes to an end. The policy allowed the U.S. to reject migrants based on COVID-19 concerns, even those seeking asylum. There have been nearly 2.8 million expulsions since March of 2020. A surge of migrants is now expected at the southern border. Officials say smugglers are spreading disinformation that the border is open. We do expect that encounters at our southern border will increase as smugglers are seeking to take advantage of this change. The 90-day troop deployment is meant to free up Customs and Border Protection agents stretched thin by a migration crisis. Border Patrol Chief Raul Ortiz says his teams need help. I don't have enough agents, I don't have enough infrastructure, I don't have enough technology. Overnight, the White House reaching a critical agreement with Mexico. Mexican officials confirmed they will continue to accept migrants expelled by the U.S. from at least four countries. The White House has also announced it's increasing asylum officers and immigration judges at the border, in addition to increasing legal pathways for immigration. Are you turning up the volume on the TV, having trouble hearing in a noisy room? Science shows hearing loss may be more common and more serious than you think. With more, here's ABC's Justin Finch. Age-related hearing loss is not a new problem, and the FDA is now allowing over-the-counter hearing aids, making treating hearing loss easier than ever. A recent study from Harvard found that one in three people aged 65 to 74 suffer from hearing loss, and many of them might not even know it. Signs of hearing loss may be turning up the volume more, having trouble hearing in a noisy room, or asking others to repeat information. While these signs may seem subtle, experts now think hearing loss can be serious and may negatively affect your brain. Scientists say that people who have hearing loss may have trouble creating new memories. They're also at increased risk for depression, social isolation, and being less active. But luckily, there are solutions. Doctors say one of the best things you can do is to get your ears checked with a hearing test to see if you could benefit from a hearing aid. Hearing aids have been shown to improve memory, concentration, and attention. They can even protect against fall-related injuries and decrease the risk of being diagnosed with dementia. With this Medical Minute, I'm Justin Finch, ABC News. When we return, Devin Biggs has your five-day forecast. Tomorrow morning on Star 977, Paul Dupuis has the music and fun. Sonny Shepard brings you Star 977 local news and Steve McKay with the weather. Turn on your radio and get the star treatment with Star 977. Looking to haul a new piece of equipment? Homeowners or commercial, Coops Truck and Equipment has the right trailer for you. Coops is the largest dealer of truck flatbeds and hauler bodies in this state and can replace any old rusty bed or outfit, any new truck. Our full service facility can modify all truck and trailers with steel and aluminum fabricators on duty. We are your go-to place for CM truck bodies, H&H trailers, and load trail trailers. For trailers, truck bodies, truck outfitting, and more, it's Coops. Dealer Events and Equipment Rental in Bangor for all your wedding and events, tents, tables, chairs, and more. Also, see us for your home project equipment rentals. Taylor Events and Equipment Rental, 1179 Hammond Street in Bangor. This is our latest hearing aid, packed with 20th century technology. Why beige? To blend in. You know, so it's almost invisible. You mean like this? How did you do that? Treat your ears to $260 off Eargo 7. Hey, Red Sox fans, you've got to play You Pick 'em Red Sox at FoxBangor.com. Local weekly winners receive prizes from Herman Metal Golf Club or the local. Register now at FoxBangor.com. 
You Pick 'em Red Sox is sponsored by Brun's Chiropractic Clinic in Bangor, Eddington Store in Eddington, Main Collision Center in Bangor, and Twin City Tile in Brewer. Tomorrow morning on Star 977, Paul Dupuis has the music and fun. Sonny Shepard brings you Star 977 local news and Steve McKay with the weather. Turn on your radio and get the star treatment with Star 977. Anyone in the Bangor area that has a sweet tooth has a new destination to get their fix. Sugar Ray opened their first brick and mortar store at 20 State Street in downtown Bangor Tuesday morning. Owner Ryan Halbert says it's always been a dream of hers to open up a physical storefront and she can't believe it's finally happening. It's a bit overwhelming, honestly. Uh, it's, it's great, but it's a bit, uh, it's a bit shocking, I guess. I still haven't completely taken it all in, I guess, is probably the way that I would Word it. Sugar Ray's opening day was such a success, Halpert had to close early after selling the majority of her inventory. Sugar Ray is open Tuesday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Getting hungry just looking at it. Now let's check your full forecast with Devin Biggs. Devin? Alrighty, here we go. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Paramount Paving. When it comes to paving, they are Paramount. Give them a call for a free estimate today. All right, let's get things rolling out here. There's an advisory posted further down to the south. It's been extended a small craft advisory until 6 a.m. Thursday. Wave heights will continue to remain active. River flood warnings also in effect until further notice. Wave heights continue to remain active at around five to seven feet according to, towards some of the buoys. So the ocean continuing to remain rather active moving forward. A few spots so starting to calm down. We'll hopefully start seeing things calming down for us later on. But otherwise, though, we had some rain moving through earlier this morning, possibly even some snow further off towards the north. Within the last few frames, we may have noticed that just a bit. But now we're catching a little bit of a break, but a few more rain showers cannot be ruled out during the afternoon and evening time frame as well. And later on tonight, though, the system may also cause that opportunity for a little bit of snow in the northern parts of the state. This whole thing right here, tracking from the west, going toward the east. So we have a few more days of this, but by Friday, things will finally start to improve. Future cast moving forward, though, a few rain showers possible. Notice some action moving in from the east going toward the west. Some rain and, yes, some snow showers as well. The snow falling in the northern parts of the state. I think everyone else will mainly stay as rain. By Thursday, here we are mainly staying as rain. As temperatures will be warming up as well. But everything moving from the east going toward the west. But Thursday night into Friday, the last of this moves out of here. So Friday morning, we're done with the precipitation. We're actually going dry as we head, for, head toward your Friday as well. So otherwise, additional precipitation looks like this. In the western parts of the state, Maybe another half inch or so before we're all finished up between now and Friday afternoon. Other spots, though, seeing around a tenth of maybe two tenths of an inch of rain or less before this backs off, too. Notice Friday, we are dry, so this will end a lot sooner than what the map might show. But otherwise, so here we go. So gusty winds can reach up to around 20 miles per hour at times. Some higher gusts right along the coast as well, where there's less obstacles to block the wind. It will keep the gusty winds kind of going on and off, especially as we head towards your Thursday as well. So make sure that you're ready for that with this area of low pressure that is moving through. Average high is 61 degrees upper 40s today and tomorrow mid 50s as we head towards your Friday. We're back in the 60s Saturday all the way through Tuesday, possibly 70s also as we head towards your Sunday. Forecast for today upper 40s to lower 50s cloudy with rain showers on the way and an east wind gusting up to around 20 to 25 miles per hour at times. Later on tonight upper 30s a few rain and snow showers possible. The northeast breeze at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tomorrow upper 40s again cloudy with a few rain showers with the northeast wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour. Paramount paving extended forecast. The rain continues through Thursday, finally drying out on Friday, mostly cloudy, highest in the mid-50s. That's also Cinco de Mayo. Saturday and Sunday were partly cloudy. Temperatures in the middle drop of 60s and Sunday, possibly even the lower 70s. Thank you, Devin. That's all for ABC 7 News at noon. Thanks for watching. I'm Susan Farley. We'll see you this evening with Peter Dubois and Beth Jones on ABC 7 News at 6. Have a great afternoon.